Hello, how are you tonight? Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and I'm here for about an hour, and it's a time when we can relax and craft and work on a project together. And I am going to be continuing on my Splendid Sampler label tonight. The, the quilt is done, we're just making the label, and I, um, I'm, I'm doing it in a little weird way. I cut, uh, I'm stitching the label, I'm embroidering it, but I'm embroidering it on a long scrap of fabric uh, from the back of the, the quilt. So I've finished embroidering it. Uh, last night we stitched uh, the web address, and uh, uh, this afternoon I stitched uh, what the project is once you're at the website. That's like the little diary of of the quilt. So, uh, and then I still have um, the start date and my name and everything on too. I can show show you guys um, so it's not in, in reverse when we flip around. Um, tonight I'm hoping to get it onto the quilt. So I'm going to do this little process using a lightweight one-sided fusible interfacing. So uh, I'm using uh, the Pellons fusible sheer weight, and I'll show you guys this, and I put a link to it as well. But there's little dots, glue dots on one side, and it's, uh, it's just like fabric on the other side. I'm gonna try and sew this to the label so that we can just iron on the label, and it will almost look as if it's needle turn applique when we're done. That is the plan. I've never done it with something so long and uh, skinny like this label, so I'm, I'm not quite sure how well it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a go tonight. Um, we'll see how long it takes here. So I'm going to flip you around, and I'd like to get going on this right away, so let me know how your week went, everyone. All right, so I got my, um, I got my iron and my pressing mat out for later. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how long this will take, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping it goes okay. I wanted to finish this up this week because next week we're going to be doing, uh, I want to start on the Charming Chevrons quilting. Um, so here we go. This is the last part that I added today. Uh, project the Splendid Sampler quilt along. So when you get to the web address, you can see that. So here's here's the whole the whole label. So it's got a name, uh, start date, complete date, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota location, and then the because I did all of the this quilt, the Splendid Sampler, I did videos for it on YouTube for every single block. I put the YouTube uh, address for that, and then the the playlist from <laughs> it's just so silly. The playlist from that that project on YouTube. So just super silly. I think the whole thing is funny. It was weird. Uh, it was just so goofy stitching, uh, embroidering a web address text. I just I don't know. I'm I'm getting a kick out of this, and you know. That's what crafting should do, right? You should get a, you should make yourself laugh, right? So I'm gonna just trim this. I don't need any of this extra. So I'm gonna leave, so I have a little bit of a space. We'll go, I don't know, right there is probably fine. So I don't need that. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. About the same distance. And there's just, it gets like a little wavy. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it getting big and small a little bit. That's not going to matter so much. But I am going to just kind of trim some of these areas where it's just... Um, just like the edge is completely goofy. Yeah, like this old jagged edge. I'm just going to do that a little bit. None of this is really going to matter, but I think it'll help me measure out the... Um, the sheer weight. And I, I don't have my cutting board or anything else, so we're doing this all with the scissors tonight. I'm just going to kind of even out this bloop. I'm going to use the text more as my guide, and this doesn't have to end up being perfectly the same um, height when I'm done either. So, okay, so we are prepped. This is the label. So ultimately, what I want it to look like is these edges will be folded under 
and you'll just kind of have like this skinny, um, this skinny like tape of just the type. So what I'm going to do next is I need to cut some of this fusible. So this this um, fusible interfacing, it's the Pelon fusible shear weight, uh, the arch the ultra lightweight fusible interfacing, and I think this has actually been renamed now. I think it's called. Um, fusible interfacing and then ultra lightweight. Uh, the, the key part is here's the style number, PLF 36. Um, so I did put a link to that in this post if you wanted to give this a try. Um, all right, so one side, this is this side is smooth and you know it's it's sheer. It's and it's just really kind of drapey too. It's it's for really lightweight fabrics to give it a little a little more heft. So there, it, it bends and moves really easily. So this side Ha is, is smooth and then this side has the glue dots on so you can see uh, it's got a texture to it you can tell that um, you can tell when you're touching the smooth side versus the glue dot side so this is the glue dot side um, we're going to I need enough of this to cover this whole whole thing so I need to start out with a straight edge and then I'm going to just cut a few uh, pieces of it. So I'm going to just like eyeball this too. So we're going to eyeball a straight edge. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to adjust this. We're going to trim this as we go. We just need to get it sewn onto the other piece. And actually, so I, I think I might clip this as I go. So here, I'm going to get you guys a little bit higher. And, uh, all right, so here's the dot side, and the smooth side is, oh, I know, this is the smooth side, hold on. Yep, this is the smooth side, so I'm going to flip this around. I want the dot side on the inside for now, because when we flip it right side out, then I want the dots... Um, on the edge. You can follow a green line on your table as an edge. Oh, that's that's true. Yeah, I, I even have Oh, yeah, I can I just I can just follow the grains here to kind of get straight enough So I think I'm gonna actually just we're gonna lay this on Lay the actual label on there. And I'm gonna just trim it Trim it to the label we're gonna ultimately trim a lot of this off I think but this will get us there. We'll see how this goes. And you know what? <laughs> Since it's here, I'm going to just clip it right away. So we have right sides together right now. And what I mean by that is the side with the stitching, I'm having that stitching side against the side with the glue dots. So I want the glue dots right now on the inside of this. And I'm going to just clip up the edge to hold these pieces together. You can use pins. I'm just I'm using my wonder clips. I've only done this once before, and uh, what I like doing this technique for is for circles. So if you need, if you want to like make a, if you want to make an applique circle with perfectly round edges, but you want it to appear as if you've needle turned it then this is a good option. So what you would do is you'd cut your circle with a quarter inch seam allowance and then put, like how we're doing here, put the right side of your fabric onto the glue dot side and that would be a circle as well. And then you're going to be sewing around the whole thing like we're going to be doing soon here. So let's, just because this is super long, and I didn't want to roll out all my fabric to have one, or the, the sheer weight to have like one long piece. We're gonna just do little pieces like this. I think we're only gonna need three. All right, that will do. I'm just gonna clip this side. Oop. I left a teeny little gap here. Um, I think that might just help me cut it later. It doesn't have to be perfect. All we really need is enough so it sticks to the fabric when we're done. Ultimately, I am going to be stitching this by hand just to like hold down the edges, but this is what's going to get us going. And it's going to look like 
it's going to look like needle turn applique. Uh, the, with needle turn applique, the look of that is kind of an applique piece that is floating off of the fabric a little bit. Like it's not fused, it's not super duper flat on the fabric like how, how it would be if you just completely fused it flat, like a normal raw edge uh, applique. This will have that effect of needle turn. Okay, so this will be our last piece. That'll do. I like that I'm kind of clipping as I go. That'll make it just a little faster. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to trim it all quite a bit, I think. Yeah, I can't reach. We'll go like that. Okay, let's clip that and then I'll get that edge. Okay. Next up, we get to sew. That's all we'll need of the fusible. So right now we should have um, the right side of the embroidery, you know, on the inside, and it should be facing the glue dot side. So the glue dots should be on the inside right now, not the outside. Um, I, I'm not overlapping it uh, because it's not gonna matter so much. I just need to have it stick down enough once it's right side out, and I think by not overlapping it, it's going to help me um, help me turn it right side out a little bit easier. Um, so you'll see in a sec here. Uh, you know what? I was going to sew on this side, but I think I'm going to flip it around and sew it on this side because it's it's clear enough that I can see the text through. All I'm going to do is I'm going to try and aim at sewing like a quarter inch away from the text. I'm gonna just totally eyeball it. But uh, that's the next little deal. All right, let, let's get to the sewing machine. I've already switched, I switched the sewing machine to uh, the same blue thread that we've been using for, ooh, this is not, just came unplugged, here we go. There we go. So I'm using um, the blue thread from the Splendid Sampler. And we're gonna stitch completely around. So we're not gonna leave any gaps at all. I'm gonna start a little bit up on the edge. Ooh, I still have my, I still have my quilting foot on. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I'm just gonna leave it on. Um, I'm, I'm gonna use that side as a guide. And I think I'll just, yeah, I think I'll just line it up. That's about a quarter inch or so. So we're gonna just go from here, I think. Experimenting tonight. I always think that's fun. Oh, whoops, hold on. Change the uh, stitch length here. All right, so I'm just going around the edge. Just kind of estimating what the top is of the of the letters and using that as my guide. If it's a little curvy. If I stitched curvy, then that's that's gonna be totally okay. All my wonder clips are upside down because I thought I was gonna sew it the other direction. Alright, here's our next little piece. So this gap doesn't actually really matter all that much um, because we are going to be stitching it down later. Uh, I could have done this one whole piece without any gaps like that. So I I'm not worried about that or I'm not even, I'm not thinking about that at all. All right. 
So this was a pretty skinny piece of fabric, so I don't have a ton of seam, al seam allowance. But again, it's not going to really matter because I am going to be um, stitching this down. So I could use um, knitting needles to uh, turn this right side out, but I am going to just be cutting a slit completely down the edge. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to try and turn it inside out like it's a tube. Um, I'm just going to kind of rip, rip the inside of this. It's going to be, I think it's going to work out. <laughs> this is going to be such a goofy looking little rectangle. I'm excited to see it though. You think this way is a good idea? I, I think it's just kind of fun. I, and I, it does give that really nice, um, that really nice, sorry, I'm sewing and trying to concentrate. That nice floating uh, needle turn applique look. And that's, that's what I'm excited about. All right, so back the other way. So if you are doing a normal square uh, label, this way of doing this would make it s way easier than what I'm going to be making it tonight. I've, I've kind of um, made it way more difficult with this long skinny piece, but you know, this really, you could do a circle, um, a circle label or a square it would be super easy using this technique. Um, I think you'll get kind of what I'm doing once, once I uh, after the next step here. Um, and then you can kind of see how it might be easier with a more normal shaped piece. But this is fun. I, I definitely uh, want to experiment with this way of doing applique a little bit more. So the idea is when we turn this right side out, those glue dots will be on the outside not the inside anymore. And the piece will still be kind of floating on the top. And I'll show you what I mean once we get this pressed. Give it a turn. Okay, I'm sewing all the way up to the edge, or where I, where I started. So uh, if you're doing this on a different shaped object, um, you'll be sewing the entire way around like what I just did. You won't be leaving any, any gaps. So in theory, you'd have your whole rectangle. So I'm gonna scooch this guy out of here. I'm going to get him away quite a bit. Let's turn it. Oops, sorry. This way. All right. So next up, I'm going to just trim it a little bit. I think that'll help us turn it right side out. So I'm just going to go around and uh, the whole thing and trim, trim it all. Let's just make sure that we've captured it all like I didn't accidentally go off the edge or anything. Nope, we're all there. So, okay, let's trim. And uh, I'm just going to get, you know, maybe a little less than a quarter of an inch there. And while I'm at it, I'm, I'm going to clip, I'm going to um, clip the corners. So that will help just going at an angle, like a 45 degree angle at the corners, at the little points. That's going to help us have nicer points once we turn it right side out. So I'm just going to go around the whole whole thing here. If you were doing this with a circle, 
um, I would cut with a pinking shears because uh, the pinking shears will make a whole pile of little notches and that will make your, your uh, circle lay flatter. So outwardly rounded edges, those need the little like V's cut out of it. That's, that's why the pinking shears are nice for that. Corners need the little angles. And if it's an inside angled, um, or an inside arc, an inside circle shape, then you need to put the little, just the little snips, like the one little snips in. You don't need the, the V's, just the little clip into the seam allowance. This is just so silly. I'm excited for it though. I wanted to get this far tonight because, um, yeah, I want to get going on that other quilt, the, the Charming Chevrons next week. Um, the quilting of that and the Splendid Sampler 2 starts next week as well. So I want to be ready for that. And I thought this would be a nice project this weekend to, to hand stitch this, um, hand tack it down when we're done. All right, back the other way, and then we're ready to turn this right side out. That's the part, that's the like kink in my thought process. <laughs> the turning this right side out might be a little difficult just because it is long. But luckily with this technique, I can do a little thing that will help the process along. And that's, and it's going to make it easy if you're doing a normal shaped thing, like a, a circle or a square or a not so skinny rectangle. Almost done. This will just make it a little easier, this trimming. Okay. All right, there we go. Let's get rid of the fuzzles. All right, so next up, we need to turn this right side out. And if you were to do this with like a normal, a normal shaped uh, circle or a square, all you would do is um, like poke a hole in the back and cut down the side. And we're gonna do the same thing, but I've left these little gaps so I don't actually have to poke in. I can just, um, you know, you can just cut and then tear this open. But since I'm working with such a skinny space, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just um, cut down the edge. So if you were doing like a circle, you would just cut a little hole in the middle of the back, the middle of the back here, and then turn it right side out. Since I'm dealing with this long skinny deal, I'm just gonna try and do it this way. I could try on I could try flipping it right side out. I do have so I do have um, one of these guys. I've never actually used it yet. Uh, it's what are these the hemostats, and you can use them for crafting. Um, so what you can do is go in there, and then you can grab grab the corner, and then you lock it together, and then you should be able to kind of turn it right side out. The sheer weight's kind of delicate, so I don't want to hurt it. <laughs> or you can just keep cutting down the middle of the edge. I'll give this a try though too. Come on, little guy. This may or may not work. <laughs> uh, there we go. So there we go. <laughs> so that's ultimately what it's going to look like. Let me just um, poke out the corners quick. So 
this is um, super, the sheer weight is, is it rips rather easy, but again, that's not going to matter for our purposes. There, I'm going to poke out these corners. But there, ultimately when we're done, we should have, um, have our stitching on one side and then these glue dots on the other side here. And so I did that, um, I just turned it right side out here and then I clipped it in the middle. I'm hoping I can just flip these around. Although maybe it's too skinny to do that. Maybe I do have to try and um, do, flip it right side out. You know what, maybe let's just clip it with some wonder clips. Just trying to kind of figure out how to deal with um, turning this right side out. But if you're doing like a circle, you would just put a little tear in the middle and um, and it'll work fine. But you know what, I think I'm gonna just wonder clip it to here and then press it and then move the wonder clips as I press. That's gonna do the job just fine for me. So we're making it work. So I probably won't even worry about turning it right side out this way. I'm just going to cut down the middle like this and flip them right side out and we'll call it a day at that. But yeah, so here's what it's going to start looking like. <laughs> See, so we got like a little, little tape of um, our stuff happening here. So again, I'm going to just cut down the center of this, this thing to turn it right side out. I'm only having this weird issue of um, it being difficult to turn right side out because I am doing this really long tube. If you were to do a, a shape that's broader, you wouldn't have this issue at all. You would just turn it right side out and be done. But we're doing it this goofy way, so let's just flip it. All my goal, my only goal here is is to have these glue dots on the back. So whatever form that takes that's going to be perfectly fine. And I'm kind of like finger pressing it a little bit here too. There. Yeah, if you had a different shape, you'd totally be done with this already. Experimenting. Oh, someone asked earlier, and I, I missed it because I was just concentrating on this, but um, where the penguin and fish came from, um, it's based on an animation that I made in college. I went to, I went to art school and took a bunch of animation classes, and... Um, it was an animation that I did out of uh, cut paper that I animated. And it's about a penguin and a fish who meet and fall in love. And then the fish has to migrate away. And they're sad, but they, they keep in touch with email. <laughs> This is before social media, before you could text someone, so they uh, they kept in, in touch with email. And uh, it's if you ever get one of my emails, the link to it uh, is in the bottom of the email. I never finished it, so it's like halfway done. <laughs> but it's loosely based on my husband and me. We went to the same same school, and he he graduated a couple of years. Uh, ahead of me, so so he left. We had to keep in touch. He stayed in town, though. All right. I think I'll just leave a little bit at the end to pop out. And then the rest I'll just fold under. But, you know, then we'll get this nice, um, nice little corners doing it this way. There we go. P 
poke out those corners. There we go. Corner, corner. And then the rest I'll, I'll flip around like, um, like what we've been doing. Let me get this little end here. Yeah, I mean, I think not necessarily this shape. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do a label quite like this again, but as far as labels go, if you want that nice floaty stitched look, um, this is a, a super easy way of doing that. In theory. This uh, sheer weight I have, um, this, this interfacing I have is pretty old. <laughs> Like I said, I think they've renamed it and everything. Um, so I'm hoping it still sticks. I'm hoping these little glue dots still stick. We'll see how it goes. You know, I'll, I'll also be pressing on the top of the embroidery, which I don't usually like doing. But again, if I did this label in any other way, I'd probably have enough of an edge away from the embroidery to fuse. I'm just, you know, doing this super weird. I am kind of folding um, the fabric or the um, folding it in so I have the, the edge of the glue dots are a little further in. That'll hide hide this if any any of the sheer weight wants to squeak out of here. Oh, who is the husband? Um, I was the penguin and my husband is the fish. <laughs> Uh, I was the one that stayed behind when when the fish fish migrated away. They used to have applause patterns on this interfacing. I can't remember what it's called. Huh. Okay, I think that's our last little clip. So here's what we got going on right here now. So we have, so this is what it's like from the front. You can see, this is what it'll look like, um, you know, so much thinner. We got a nice finished edge because we sewed, you know, we sewed around the whole edge, right? We didn't have to tuck anything under, like in needle turn applique, it's, it's tucked under for us because we just turned it right side out. But there we go. Um, that is kind of like our tape this is this is what it will look like when it's done here all right so now all we have to do is fuse this guy down and then um, I will go around the edge and hand stitch down the edge just so it has a, a pretty nice edge so all right let's um, let's figure out how to do this so I have my quilt here I'm gonna get higher again for you guys get my um, my iron on again so I've laid out the quilt here. This is the this is the bottom edge of the quilt. So I thought we're gonna just have to scooch up along as we go, which is fine. Then we can take this pressing slow. But I thought I'd uh, have the label kind of in the lower left hand corner. Get out there. Lower left hand corner and just kind of go along along the edge. So this is the bottom left hand corner. I suppose I could pin or clip this in place, but I think I'm just gonna go slowly. <laughs> it's cute. So, all right, I'm just gonna go, you know, I don't know, I'm like, I don't know, an inch and a half up and an inch and a half from the edge. And you might see a little bit of the edge of the fusible, but when we stitch it down, I can adjust that a little bit. So, all right, we're gonna go right there. Let's see how this works. So the glue dots are on the outside now. So this should fuse. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, the, these dots are pretty old. I'm just trying to get the edge. 
Oh, hey, Patricia. Um, I'll have the replay of this, but we are attempting to fuse uh, fuse my label to the quilt. I'm just a little worried that these dots aren't going to be working. Okay, they're, they're kind of down. Yeah, okay, so now it's it's stuck down here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to just go along the edge. You know, even if this is only stuck down enough um, for me to just, for it to just hold in place while I applicate, that's, that's going to be fine. So I'm going to scooch down just so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, so there we are. This is, uh, the glue dots are kind of, well, I don't know, they're not working all that well. Here they are a little bit better. I think I just need to stay on a little bit longer. No, I don't think it requires steam. I just think it is old and it requires me to just hold it there a little bit longer, really. So, all right, I'm going to remove this next clip and we will hold that and fuse this down. I'm just going to go over the top of these stitches. Flatten in the stitches a little bit, but I think we'll get it done a little faster. Oh, you bought a cordless iron like this and love it. Ugh, I am in love with it too. Um, they actually have this iron. So I got this on Mass Drop and they actually have it up on there again right now. Um, I don't have a link in my post here, but I do have a link in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. So if you wanted to head over there, if you're interested in this, in this iron, I put a link to it there. This is this is sticking down enough. It's sticking down enough for for what we need it to. But look, it's just um, it's it's looks like it's gonna be floating on top because there's not actual fusible on like holding the fabric down. See, it it, it can it can bubble bubble up because the only part that's sticking is um that part that we turned right side out. So um. It'll look, it'll have that needle turn applique look to it, which I'm super excited about. All right, so hopefully, hopefully I can fold, well, let's see. Got to clean up my space a little bit here. Keep scooching, scooching this down. Remove a few more clips. Just kind of hold it all in place. That looks all right. Oh, you love it too! Ooh, I want to melt. Don't want to melt those. Yeah, I. Oh man, not having the cord has just been made a huge difference in in my pressing for sure. It's just that. Oh gosh, that one annoying thing that you don't have to deal with anymore. So I am squishing my stitches when I do this. I don't usually like pressing on top of stitches, but I am trying to avoid um, squishing my little French knots yet. This is going to go through the wash and it's going to, um, it's going to just wear however it's going to wear. You've spent so much money on mass job. <laughs> oh, you bought a big so steady table. Oh my gosh. Nice. Yeah, this is that, remember that green? I ran out of binding. <laughs> and I happen to have that green binding from a different project. So that green binding that I just hung on to kind of saved the day when we, I can't believe we didn't measure enough binding. By we, I mean me. <laughs> I did not measure enough binding. Oh, this is kind of cool. Look, this fabric is the same as here, but it's like bleeding out a little bit here. That's, that's, um... Totally goes with the back of this quilt because I did this this the back of this quilt is all like improv pieced Kind of how we did the charming chevrons quilt, but instead of like instead of the pieces all being chevrons um, They're all they're all more square When I'm assembling a quilt you only have your king size bed to lay it on oh nice with this iron You can put the iron mat underneath the quilt. Oh man Holly. That's perfect. So Holly's saying that she doesn't have a space big enough to press 
press something except for her king size bed and now she can use the cordless iron since it's cordless you can move it around which is amazing and um and the mat here and then actually press on the bed all right this is working i think it's at least like i said gonna hold things down enough for us that is being a little annoying i should maybe pin Put a throw a few pins on here. Yeah, you know what? Just because I'm not quite trustworthy of of um, <laughs> how sticky this is going to be, I'm just going to throw a pin here and there in it, just like that. Just just um, just to make sure that it'll it'll stay enough. I'm going to stitch it down right away, um, but I'm hand stitching it, and I don't want to. You know, I'm going to be moving this around a lot, and I don't want it to pop off here. So this will be enough, I think, to kind of keep it in place. Because I need to, like, fold it up like this just to keep moving it along here. All right. Let's place the next area. That looks good, I think. I like how it all of a sudden blends in to the background. Oh, you got the Microtech needles from from the Schmitz needles or Schmetz needles from from Mass Drop. I had those in my cart, but then I'm like, oh man. I, I'm trying not to buy more stuff. I'm trying to use up the stuff I have, and I do have a few needles yet, so I figure, eh. Once I run out of those, I'll I'll buy them in bulk next time. That label couldn't have worked out better even if it was planned. <laughs> That's nice, Noeline. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really I'm really liking this. I love this like weird long label. I think it's just the weirdest. I don't know. It's the goofiness of this label is totally making my day. <laughs> That's that would have received like a whole huge eye roll from from the hubs, but <laughs> that I get excited about it. just like stupid little things like this. But I just think it is so funny. All right, let's keep moving. And I, you know, you could just stitch this down on the machine too. Oh, but then you you'd be stitching through. Yeah, you'll want to hand stitch. Most people kind of hand stitch the label, right? Because then you're not stitching through through the quilt. Yeah, so we'll we'll hand stitch around here. And I'm going to do that just the same way that I hand stitched the label on, really. Just to, or just like how you'd needle turn applique something. You're just tacking it down with a bunch of little stitches. We might actually get to that a little bit tonight. I can get it started. I'm also trying to use up this blue bobbin thread, so I will take I'll take the bobbin thread out of the um, machine and use that as my hand stitching thread. Again, I'm making this more difficult for myself by making the label skinny and long. Any other shaped label, this would be done already. I am I'm, I am gonna keep adding these pins though, just because I need a backup backup attachment. Okay, we are almost done. Oh, delivery um, to Australia on Mastrop was fast. That's good to know. Oh, that's really good to know because yeah, that can sometimes be tough. I'm sure. I think this is the goofiest thing ever. All right, I've decided to not care about pressing on top of the the um, French knots anymore either. I'm just gonna press. Just gonna get her stuck. So, 
my guess is that if you have a newer, newer fusible, um, you won't, it'll stick just fine. I'm having just some issues just because I think it's super old. I should probably just toss it and get some new stuff, but oh well. Stick. It's doing the job enough. This is, we're basically just using the fusible to baste it. Um, baste it down for us before we stitch. And it flattens it all nice too. So we have like that nice edge. Fuzzles. All right. I think we can unclip all the rest of these. Um, Patricia, I am using, uh, I have a link for it. It is the Pelon Fusible Sheer Weight, uh, the Ultra Light Weight Fusible Interfacing. Um, here's the style number. I think they've actually renamed it. I think it, they call it Fusible or Ultra Lightweight, uh, Lightweight Fusible now. But PLF 36, if you do a search for that, um, then that's where you can find it. Uh, the, the key factors of it are that it's lightweight, so that made it so you can turn it inside out. It's not like that fusible that we use for our, our applique, where it has that paper backing. It just is fabric-y, and one side has the glue dots, and one side does not. So that's that and that fact that it's lightweight and acts like fabric. Those are, oops, let's get rid of all those two. Th those are the key features of it. One side has glue dots, there's no paper backing, and it, it's just like fabric. So, you know, I'm sure there's, ugh, get these guys out of the way. I'm sure there's other brands and stuff. But yeah, uh, sheer, lightweight, fusible, I'm thinking. Thinking all the brands would have some form of those words in it. But yeah, if you just ask, you know, a store helper, um, I need a lightweight, fabricy, fusible interface that's fusible on one side. And it's like fabric. I, I think they could, they should be able to get you somewhere with with that. But yeah, otherwise I, I, uh, I put a link to um, something with that, uh, the Pelon stuff with that that style number. I think that's the key point is this the style number. Um, the name is different on the link, but I think it's the same stuff. I think I just have old stuff. Oh, your life looks so fun to see and read. That's <laughs> thanks, Patricia. I'm super stoked for it. So I think you know I could probably pull this off, um, but I think it's like I said, it, it's stuck on enough that it'll it'll do what we need it to do. So I'm gonna just pin this end. But yeah, so that is. Oop, I pinned it to my my um board. But here, so next up, um, we're almost done here tonight. But I want to just kind of show you where I'm going next with this. Here, I'm gonna get, lift you way up so you can see though. Just because I think it's fun. So all right, here's, here's the bottom of the quilt. So let's, let's start at the edge. So it's right on the edge and it's just <laughs> this weird long label. It's so goofy. <laughs> okay, I'm in love with it. All right, so next up, oh, for sure, Patricia, for sure. I hope that you copy this idea. This is, that's exactly what I want. All right, so I need to, um, I'm gonna start stitching this down and I'm realizing that I don't think I have any sewing needles near me. Um, so I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna just use my embroidery needle. I, I usually like using a little thinner needle. Actually, maybe I'll just go grab it quick here. Give me two, Second, 
Here we go. We just we need we need Zeb here to uh, help us out. So all right, let's get the let's put this needle back. Um, I want all right. So here here is that um, Milner's needle or that that straw needle. It's it's thin like a sewing needle or like a like a sharps like a traditional sharps needle. Um, it's thin. It has that small eye because we're just using normal sewing thread. It's got a sharp point, but it's a little longer, which is nice for the needle turn applique stuff. So I'm going to also grab, I'm grabbing the bobbin out of my sewing machine. Hold on. There we go. So I'm, I'm using up, <laughs> I'm trying to use up this, this thread here. So I'm going to use this as my needle turn applique thread. There, I just got a little, um, I don't know, 24 inches or so off of there. All right, I'm gonna scooch way down here though now so you can, can see. I know, little Zeb, I got Zeb out again. So I, I moved um, Zeb, oh, did I show you guys? I don't know if I, there, this little guy, my little fish museum and circus character. Um, he's from Fish Museum and Circus on, um, on, uh, on Etsy, and uh, I love him. This is one that has needles in, and I have one that has pins in, and then I got that thread-pooping unicorn from him, but I've moved them all out of the way uh, because I'm, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't hung up the hedgehog yet. I haven't hung up my hedgehog wall hanging, and uh, I don't want it to accidentally fall and hurt my little my little fish museum and circus dudes. So, so I moved them out of the way, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get that up this weekend. We'll see. I know it's been kind of just dangling there for a while. All right, I'm just tying a little knot there. There's a Pelon product used for t-shirts. You can't remember which one. Uh, I, I, oh, you're talking about a t-shirt quilt. Okay, not, not this, yeah. Cause I don't, that's a different thing than this. All right, so I'm just starting. I'm just starting somewhere and I'm going to, I'm not starting right at the end. I'm just going to start right here. So I'm going to just come up from the back and now here I'm only going to be going through tucking that thread. I don't want to go th all the way through, right? Cause I don't want to, I don't want to go to the front side of the quilt. I'm just going to grab, um, let's see. I think I started this weird. I already have a knot after not doing anything. <laughs> That's always fun. Okay. So I'm just going to go around that starting place one more time. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to grab the back of the fabric, the back of the quilt. I'm not grabbing the front because again, I don't want to go all the way through. And then I'm just grabbing the fabric part, just a teeny little bit fabric part of the label, a stitch length away. And then I'm going to go directly across from where I just stitched and just grab the back fabric again and go about a stitch length away again and then grab, grab that top. So I don't know if you guys can tell because it's blending in pretty well, but this is basically, I'm basically just like how I stitch my bindings on. I'm just kind of going a stitch length away. This is how you needle turn applique too, but we've already tucked it under. All right, but see here, we, we have it attached now and it looks like, um, it's fully attached on that edge now. It looks like needle turn applique. So I'll just stitch a little bit more so you guys can, um, so you can tell a difference once I go up a little bit higher. But again, the nice thing about doing it this way versus just fusing it on um, with like a, with just that paper, that fusible that has the fusible on two sides with the, the paper um, where you fuse it onto your, back of your fabric and then you take the paper off and then you f fuse it to the quilt. Um, this doesn't have that raw edge, 
but it also floats. Like, but what I mean by floats is like this whole, none of the back of the fabric of this top part is touching anything. So it just, it bounces off of the back. Um, so you can even see it's only attached really by these little stitches. It's of course attached by, you know, the back of it is, but since we did that whole turning it right side out thing, it, the front part just floats. And that's how, that's how needle turn appli applique looks. Oh, Lori Holt does her applique this way, but it isn't the fusible pellon. Um, just ordinary non-fusible. Oh yeah, you can do it that way too. Just, uh, especially with circles. So if you do a circle and yeah, it doesn't have to be fusible. It can be just, you know, a normal tear away, um, uh, interface. So you, you sew, you know, the right sides together again, and then you just tear a little hole in the middle of the, of the, the, uh, interface. And then you turn it right side out through that hole, and then you can just applique it down like this. The nice thing about the fusible is that you can basically do the same thing, but you can fuse everything down in place for you. Thinking that if I if you made the label wider, embroider on the bottom half and fold in half and attach, as you said, the binding, it would eliminate a step. If I Oh yeah, I mean I could have done this as like almost like bias tape. I could have done that. Fold it in half and attach as you sew on the binding. Oh, you mean like here, attach it as I sew on the binding. That'd be kind of interesting. That'd be kind of fun. It could be like this little floating label that like a little tab almost. Huh, that'd be kind of fun. Like a little a little tab. That'd be kind of cute. <laughs> Just like the, this little flapping tab right here that then you could write on both sides really if you wanted to. It could flap down and and there'd be something on the other side. It'd be like a secret fun label. I have seen the labels where um, well actually kind of like how we did on the hedgehog quilt Oh, okay, great. Bonnie um, put some of the Pellon Fusible sheer weight numbers down there. Uh, but like how, if you remember with the hedgehog uh, banner behind me, um, we did those little triangles in the corner. We did it to hang, to hang a, a, a dowel through there, but you could do the same thing as a label. So um, stitch, like embroider under the label and then um, do that little triangle corner that you just sew right into, sew right into the binding when you do it. That's, I mean, that'd be, maybe that's what I should do next time. That'd be the easy way, right? We're running a little late tonight, aren't we? Um, I think I'm gonna end it right here, but I wanna just kind of show you guys it. Oh, well, here it is um, close up. So this is the part that's been totally stitched down, which looks so nice, I think, compared to like, you know, right here, it's still poofed up a little bit. Um, but yeah, once we have it all stitched all the way around, it's just gonna be part of the quilt. Um, I think it's just gonna be so fun, I'm stoked. Uh, but yeah, so here it is again, just way up high. It's just so silly. <laughs> Oh man, makes me laugh. But yeah, clearly this is a weird way of doing it. You could do the same technique, but you know, a normal square in the corner or something too. But hey, why not? This is fun. And then the other thing is I'm I'm using up scrap fabric again, which is what the whole back of the quilt is. So like if you if I just tilt you guys up, see here's here's the back of back of this quilt has just lots of little improv areas. Jeez, this is such a big quilt. I'll have to, I'll um, show you guys this um, once I'm completely done. But yeah, so all these little itty bitty little improv areas, just using up all the rest of the fabric, even the little itty bitty parts. Like look at, look at some of these super small pieces. And then we did, so here's the label that, you know, came that, that I purchased um, 
with the last one. So this is half of it. This is 51 through 100, and then somewhere else on the quilt here is the um, one through uh, through 40 or through 50. So uh, I think this label kind of kind of has the same mood of it all, just kind of uh, improv pieced, and it's an actual part of the scrap of the back. So loving it. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Oh, you're so doing this for, for your backings now, Gretchen. I'm, this is the first time I have done the uh, just improv pieced back from all the scraps from the front. And it was so much fun that I've been doing it on, on every other quilt. Um, you know, I did it on the Charming Chevron's quilt, and I'm going to do this for the, um, the Isle of Home quilt, too. Let's see if I can show you a little bit more of it. Probably not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I will, um, I'll hold this out uh, later. I'll take some good photos of this before I throw it through the wash and stuff. And I'll take a photo of it, of the label, once I get it all stitched on. So here we go. So silly. <laughs> and our little, our little part where we ran out of, this is, this is, a, we, I only needed like 18 inches more of, um, the binding and we totally ran out so <laughs> hence the green but I love it all right guys um, I'm so happy I got this far on it so we could do this tonight I'm going to stitch this down uh, over the weekend hopefully and I'll sh I'll be sure to show you guys it uh, then I will officially be done with the splendid sampler one before we start the splendid sampler two <laughs> So that's a good thing. That was my goal. Uh, why I wanted to move ahead on this label. Why I did the extra embroidery uh, before coming on tonight. So awesome. Uh, if you do a label like this, I would love to see it. Um, so post it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And if you're not part of that, um, go over there on Facebook and click join and I'll let you in. Uh, but yeah, I'm totally happy with this and I would totally do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, alright guys, have a fabulous weekend, and I will see you here again on Monday uh, when we're going to start up the uh, Charming Chevron's quilt again. So, see you later guys. Have a great weekend. Good night.